Welcome back to Information Technology Fundamentals. We're going to look at using databases in this lecture. We're going to describe databases and explain their purpose. We're going to look at how relational methods are used by structured databases and how users and applications can interface with databases. And lastly, we're going to distinguish application architecture models for da databases. So what is a database? Well, a database is an organized collection of information. The information is stored in a structured manner for easy access. Uh, a, a database typically contains a table, as we see here on the slide. And the table is going to have columns and rows. So it looks very much like an Excel spreadsheet. Only across the top are field names instead of uh, letters like in Excel. So we can see that it has, in this example, seed rate, yield, crop, cultivator. So those are the fields. And then the rows going across, we're going to call records. So each individual record is listed in a row going across. A database is used to store information securely and to report the information it contains. The following processes and tools are used for creation, which involves uh, defining what information the data database will store. Import slash input. Once the database has been created, it must be populated with data records. Records could be either input manually or brought over from another program. A database has to store information, and importantly, it has to store data persistently and securely. Databases have to support queries, which are really questions we ask of the database. So we're going to ask the database to give us information with some type of criteria that we give it. And lastly, the database needs to report. So the query might give us a whole bunch of information that meet our criteria, and the report is going to be the formatting and summarization of those records. So Database raw data frequently looks like a table like you see in a spreadsheet such as Excel. Or we might find it in a comma separated value file like you see below, also known as a CSV file. So why don't we just store all of our information in these flat file systems? That's because databases give us some additional features. So databases will define the column data types and validate the data entry. So if I say a date can only go in this field, it will only allow a date to go in there. Databases can store and link multiple tables in the same database. Uh, they can use schemas and some other things to support that. Databases will support many users and a very high transaction rate. And databases are more scalable and can use more sophisticated access controls. When we have a database that has multiple tables that are related to one another, we use something called a Relational Database Management System, or RDBMS, to maintain and query data in the database. Some common examples of that would be uh, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, and Microsoft Office Access. One of the key features of a relational database is going to be the primary and foreign key. So each record in a table has to be unique. And one of the ways we, uh, we have to have a unique identifier to find records in the table. So that unique identifier is going to be a primary key. And when we have a second table that accesses the first table and has a field in it for it, the primary key in table A becomes the foreign key in table B. So if we look at this next slide, we can see a whole set of tables in a database. And if we look at the invoices table right here, you will see that it has many connections. So for example, it has customer ID is the third entry, and we have a table for customers. Now in this example, 
invoice number has the little key next to it. So that is the primary key for invoices. If we look at the customer table, the customer ID has a little key next to it. So that's the primary key for customers. And when we follow this line, it's got a little one and it goes down here and it has a little infinity symbol and it's connected directly to customer ID. So what that's really telling us is the database is set up to have one customer with many invoices. So the, the customer ID is the primary key in this table in the foreign key in this one. And if we look through the rest of this example, you can see all these tables are related and they have different types of relationships. Most of them are one to many. So we have one shipper to many invoices. And we have uh, primary keys and foreign keys in the databases as well. Databases collect a lot of information. And if we don't put some constraints in it, we could get, as they say, garbage in, which would give us garbage out. So for example, if we had a date field, but we allowed people to put something other than dates in it, it's going to really foul up our database. So all of our fields, which are columns, are going to be defined by a data type, which is the first basic constraint on that field uh, on what can be entered into it. We can add other constraints, for example, uniqueness. So the field that we designate as the primary key, we don't allow any duplication in that field. We can add validation rules. So if we had a field for social security number, we could make sure it has the correct number of digits and we could even look for hyphens in there as well. We can tell a field not to be blank, a required field. We can specify a format for inputting it. Uh, for example, a mask for a telephone number, or we can even add a default value into a field. Uh, so if we had a customer database for Ohio, for example, we could automatically have the state field have an OH in it to begin with. When, we, when information is stored into a relational database, it's stored in a structured format. That's what we were looking at. We saw a table that had columns and rows, and we could read all the data in there. We want to store other things in our databases besides that type of structured data. For example, we might want to store complete documents, images, spreadsheets. Um, so when we want to add this unstructured data, we're going to call that an unstructured database. We don't want to constrain the user about what they put in there. And the data that is in an unstructured data uh, database, we still want to be able to extract and search it. So we have a structured database, an unstructured, and then a semi-structured database with documents that contain metadata or markup that identifies the values can contained. So for example, if we had a database with pictures, we might have data in with the each image to describe what it is so it's easily searched. So a document database is a great example of a semi-structured database. In this database, we have a collection of documents that is growing as we add to it. The documents can use the same structure or be of different types. So we could have uh, DOCX and PDFs in the same uh, field. And the database's uh, query engine has to be designed in such a way that it can extract information about each of the different types of uh, documents. Documents uh, that use uh, XML or extensible markup language provide uh, structure for this. Another type of database is called a key value pair database. Sometimes it's also referred to as a dictionary database, which really there's just two fields. You have a key and a value. Key value databases are not relational and frequently we see them used uh, in JSON, but we also see them used for settings in computers. So the Windows registry, for example, has key and values associated with it. Data definition language or DDL are SQL commands that 
are used to add or modify the structure of a database. The basic examples of those are create, alter table, drop, and create index. Data manipulation language or commands are commands that allow you to insert, update records, and extract information from records for viewing which would be a query. So in this example, we see insert into a table, update a table, delete from a table, and select is going to be your basic query command. SQL supports secure access control where specific user accounts can be granted rights over different objects and tables in a database. When an account creates an object, it becomes the owner of that object with complete control over it. The owner cannot be denied permission of the object and the owner can be changed using the alter authority uh, statement. On this slide, now we have our basic permission uh, commands, grant permission to and deny permission to. Those are our basic permission commands in SQL. There are five ways we can access information in a database. We can go directly to the data and have manual access. We can use a query to extract information, put it into a report and to review. We can use another program to access the database. We can create a user interface that allows uh, users to access the data. And we also, will include backups and data export into this as well. Application art architecture models are described as tier system. So for example, a one tier database is one that has the front end and the back end hosted on the same computer. Sometimes that's referred to as a standalone model. A two tier model has a client and a server where the server machine runs the database and the client is used to run applications and use an interface to access it. A three tier uh, architecture model means you have a client front end, but you then in the middle have some type of application or business logic. And at the back end, you have a database on a server. Now there are examples that go further than just three tier. And once you have more than a three tier architecture model, it's, it's going to be defined by the number and then the word tier. Some reasons why you have more than three tiers is some databases have a security layer in there as well. So if you had a front end, a security layer, an application a logic layer, and a database, you would have a four tier architecture model. So in here, we described databases and looked at the purpose of them. We listed some methods to access the structured database. And we looked at ways that users and applications can interface with the databases. And lastly, we looked at the architecture models of databases.